What's up everyone, this is AJ from alphapixel.net and today's tutorial is about how to create custom depth mats within Cinema 4D using shaders. This will give us a lot more flexibility over how we want our depth map set up and it doesn't just limit us to the camera's focal plane. We can actually rotate the focus and make it shallower or tighter rather than having to try and adjust the camera's f-stop. This will give us a lot more flexibility over how our depth maps look in compositing and not lock us into the single focal plane of the camera. So let's jump right into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is actually save out your scene as whatever your scene name is, dash depth or something like that because we are going to be heavily modifying the materials and I definitely wouldn't want you to lose anything. So once you've done that Grab all of your objects in your scene and group them into a null. Hit Alt-G and twirl that down. Then we need to get rid of all the texture tags on all the objects. And that might sound tedious, but there's a pretty easy way to do it if you just grab one of the texture tags and copy it to the, the main null. You can right click and go to select identical child tags and that will select all the tags. That will select all the texture tags inside of the null and then you can just hit delete. I'm just going to undo that for one second and throw in a shameless plug for one of my plugins, Hide and Seek, which lets you find any objects in your scene super fast and big groups of objects too. So if you have huge scenes, this is a super helpful tool. But in this case, if we were to just try to grab those texture tags, we could type in texture tags and it would find every texture tag in the scene and then you could just hit delete tags same thing. So now that we have that we actually want to create a new texture and we're gonna drop that texture onto that top null so that texture gets applied to all objects in the scene. So then we'll dive into that texture and we will get rid of the color and the reflection and we're gonna grab the luminance channel and in there we're gonna grab our we're gonna grab a gradient and you'll see it's applied it to every object individually in their own UV coordinates. We actually need to change the projection mode from the default, if we grab the texture tag here, if we, uh, we need to change the projection from the default UVW to flat. And you'll see that changed right there and now we get these little strips and that's because it's tiling. And if we jump out and look at the scene in its larger format, you can see that see those tiles so if we turn off tiling we actually get this little strip and it kind of alphas out the rest of the scene which is actually really cool <laughs> definitely something to play around with there too kind of cuts in and you can see inside the objects anyway that's not what we want we actually need a texture tag underneath that to kind of catch everything else so we'll grab one of these pure white textures and that's just a luminance channel with white in the color and we'll drop that on the null as well and grab our gradient and drag that on top so now we have something looking like a depth map but it's not quite right yet we need to adjust the texture so we're going to jump into the texture and modify that gradient really quick so we're going to drag the, drag the black to the middle and we're going to click over on the white to get ourselves a new, um, a new color and we'll drag it over to the side so we get a strip. Alright, now we've got our strip and it's starting to look okay, but now how do we move the texture around? Well, if we grab the texture tag, you actually don't get any handles and you can grab your object, but you're just going to be moving in the scene. So what you need to do is have your object selected and your, your depth map texture tag selected. Hit the texture mode icon. Now we also want to hit enable axis modification and I'll show you why. If we leave it off and we try to scale our texture, it gets really gooey and it's hard to like, it doesn't scale proportionally. So if I undo that and we hit the axis modification, when we scale, we actually get it scaling proportionally. So then we want to rotate the texture 90 so it's pointing straight down. We'll zoom out and we'll just drag it up so we can see it a little easier. 
And there's a couple ways you can make this fill the scene. You can just scale it up to match your scene, or you can right click the texture tag and say fit to object. And I already know that it's going to be bigger than my object if I do that. And if it asks you about sub objects, typically you're going to want to say yes. But I have some hidden objects and it's covering everything. So I'm actually going to want to scale that back down quite a bit. And then I'm going to want to squeeze the texture in a little thinner. Now we're getting something that looks like a depth map. But you'll see it's actually not level with the camera, which is a great part of the customization is you can do different things with it. So if I grab my null and my texture tag again, now I can start rotating it and positioning it wherever I want. Right now, just the background would be in focus. So let's drag that forward and see if we can get <clears throat> our type in focus here. And there we have that. And you can play around with you know, the scaling and make it as tight or as wide as you want to. And you definitely don't have to use just the gradient. You can use, the great thing about this, you can use any shader. You now you could go up and use a noise shader if you want to. It's going to create some crazy results, but it's part of the flexibility. You know, you can play around with it. So I want the type in there. So I'm just going to make it a little bit wider here. Make sure I make sure I get that covered. I'm actually going to go into the gradient and I'm going to drag out another black and bring it to this side just to make sure it's pure black on all of the type. So this is just another way to modify that. There. If I hit render, oops, see I have GI on. If you turn off GI and AO. There. I can see that some of the letters are still a little gray, so I could actually just increase that there a little bit. Now when I hit render, good. All the type is in pure black. Now that we have that, we're ready to composite our depth pass into any compositing program. So first I actually need to save this. So if I actually just pop this open and save to the desktop, then I can go ahead and open it in After Effects. And I'll just import, I already rendered out the color pass, so if I grab both of those, <clears throat> can just drop our depth scene into a new composition and our depth pass on top. And we can turn off the visibility of the depth pass. So what I'm actually going to use for depth is a plugin called Frisch Left, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of. Um, it's got great depth of field, great blurring. If we pop open the depth of field plugin and drop that onto our color pass, we have an option for a depth layer, and we'll just use our depth pass layer. And nothing happened because we need to turn our radius up. You'll see it's actually blurring where we had the black, and we actually need to go down to the depth buffer and invert that. So now everything that was black is in focus, and then you can play around with that. You can go in and see the depth buffer and see the sharp zone, and then go back to your normal view, and everything should be set to your custom depth map. So really quick, one other way you can do depth maps from Cinema is if you go into your save options and go to RPF, and toggle that down, you can actually save out a bunch of different channels inside of that one file. But this will only give you the camera's Z depth. The Z is the, what you want because that's the that will give you the, your depth of field, but it will give it to you from your camera and you won't be able to customize it how we've done it here. But just to let you know that's another option. <clears throat> anyway, that is custom depth maps in Cinema 4D. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I will include the scene for download as usual. Feel free to post any questions or comments you have. 
and definitely let me know if you guys found this useful. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys in the next tutorial.